Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from the Carpathian Basin here in the capital of Hungary, Budapest. I hope everybody is having a good week so far, being productive, learning lots of valuable information. Hi Lydia, hi Navneet, hi Maksud, good to see many of our regular students. Hi Sammy, nice to see our members. Students, in this class, we are looking at a reading section from the academic IELTS. But again, for those of you doing the general IELTS, section three is very, very similar to uh, the reading passages of the academic IELTS. So if you can master the academic reading, you will definitely do a great job in the general version as well. This uh, lesson, the materials are presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there, join our premium package, and begin improving your English and communication skills. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. Again, we have lots and lots of materials, including original practice exams, HD videos for all of the different sections. It's definitely worth investing a few dollars getting our premium package. Click that big red button to join for the academic at aehelp.com. Blue button, blue background, sorry. And for the general, it's the green background. Again, click that big red button to join us there. Of course, uh, download Link the Apps, Academic IELTS Help app from your app store. Link it to aehelp.com, general IELTS help app for gieltshelp.com. Link them together and uh, use them together for a really great learning experience. If you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Now, students, this is a reading class, so make sure to read. Don't just listen to me. And read aloud. It means in a way that you can hear yourself if possible. Reading aloud is a very, very good way to improve your reading fluency and comprehension. Okay, so uh, today reading, tomorrow we'll do some task two. Uh, let's have a look at the passage for today. Okay, so in this passage, we have a list of headings uh, question, which is great. List of headings questions can be quite challenging. So, there we go, we have some paragraphs to F, and then here is our passage for the day. Let's take a look at the title. Always uh, read the title carefully, and then try to get a good idea of what you might be reading about. Uh, so here is our title, A Territorial Dispute Between Friends, Canada and the United States. Hmm. Okay. So we read the title. Um, now, what do you think it's about? So based on this title, what might you th assume or what might you guess that this passage is about? Hi, Carolina. Hi, Rinku. All right. So a territorial dispute between friends, Canada, and the United States. What could that be about? So whenever you read the title, ask yourself, what is this about? Okay, so read the title and ask, what might this be about? Also, visualize. All right. So yeah, Canada uh, and uh, the U.S., they're definitely neighboring countries. Alex Joseph says maybe it's about national interests. And O's, uh, our newer member, says it could be something about Alaska, maybe arguing about Alaska. There's always been kind of arguments about Alaska. Carolina says that's kind of interesting. And then... Uh, Lydia says, maybe some kind of a border conflict. Sibi agrees, boundaries are not uh, demarcated property. All right. So some of you are saying, okay, well, uh, these are neighboring countries. 
it may be about the borders perhaps about Alaska okay which is not a bad guess for sure okay um sure so now that we thought about that so those are some good ideas okay so yeah when two countries are next to each other they're often uh, fights about uh, boundaries or borders um, and uh, why so always take it one step further okay so uh, tip take your thoughts one step further ask why so For example, uh, why might these neighboring countries fight over boundaries? What do you think? Why might two countries fight over borders and say, hey, no, that's, that's the line over there. No, that's, that's the line over there. So why would they do that? Why would they do that? Okay, Hassan says, well, maybe it's for a dispute over resources. Carolina, desiring for power that's only at the surface, right? There's always a reason uh, for that. Sai so says land and power. Uh, Sibi says politically vested interests. Okay, so sure, I mean, we don't know yet. So any of these um, politically vested Interest, sure, maybe power, perhaps. I really liked Hassan's uh, resources. Okay. Uh, oh, it says because each one wants big land and resources. Yeah, humans never have enough, even though Canada and U.S. are among the largest countries. Okay, so politically vested interest, power, resources, sure. Uh, and when you think of resources, you should think of water, uh, metals, trees, or wood, right? So there are lots of them, coal, etc. Sure, all right, now we're getting a good idea. Good, okay. Uh, and let's take it one step further. How? So how would countries do this? So how do they dispute? What do they do? Okay, go through all of these again. Yeah, reader you says fossil fuels. Yeah, there's a lot of disputes of, uh, between countries for fossil fuels. That's for sure. Oh, it says for fish and oil, water, oil, natural gas, it says Hassan. Absolutely. Some of you know <laughs> maybe a bit about Canada and the U.S. because you're definitely on the right track, okay? So how would we do it? So Roshni says wars, okay? Um, there are different kinds of wars. So uh, there are physical wars. Okay, that's one type of war. Yeah. Uh, what other kinds of... now? U.S. and Canada, it's not likely that they would go into a physical war with each other because there's so many people that live in both countries. Um, so uh, what other kinds? There, there we go. Angel M. John says, how about a trade war? So economic trade war. Yeah, Canada and the U.S. have definitely done that. I think we're doing that right now, actually, a little bit as well. So there's political. Yeah, political. Sanctions, right? Now, that's really hard for Canada and the U.S. to have these kinds of sanctions and uh, political wars because, of course, both countries are very big and have a lot of natural resources. So uh, if uh, the U.S. says to Canada, hey, we're not going to supply you with any more fresh water, Canada kind of says, eh, who cares? We have lots of it. Um, okay, uh, so this is the level of thought. This is the depth of thought that you want to get from reading the title, okay? Um, everybody clear on that? Sajan, sanctions means 
that they don't allow certain products into the country. Okay, like not allowing the transport of water or technology or information is a sanction. Okay, so they basically restrict the country from being able to do certain activities. Okay, financial or otherwise. All right, um, so this is the level of depth. Again, this is how deeply you want to um, uh, kind of explore your ideas, okay? So everybody's good on that, yeah? All right, um, so when you read this title, you want to think, okay, here are two countries. They're beside each other. Why are they fighting? Something about borders probably, uh, maybe something about an area of land like Alaska. Uh, they're uh, fighting because of natural resources, power position, uh, some kind of political interest. Uh, they do this through physical war, economic trade wars, political sanctions, okay? Now it will be much easier to understand the passage. So let's jump back to the passage, okay? And now we want to look at the questions. So firstly, let's look at the list of headings, okay? Uh, list of headings, it's the only question type that comes before the passage, okay? So definitely look at it before the passage. The IELTS examiners give you this question before the passage because they want you to look at it before the passage and they want you to answer it while you're reading. Okay, it's the only one that that's like that, all right? So keep this in mind. Uh, for list of headings, okay? So a list of headings is A, the only question type that you should answer while you read the passage. All other questions or all other question types, you should only answer after you finished the passage, okay? Now, another interesting one for list of headings is it's the only question type that has extra and false information, but you should still read it before the passage, okay? Again, all other question types that have false or extra information, uh, you should not read before the passage, okay? So that's a really important strategy, okay? That's a really important strategy. So list of headings, it's the only question type. And if some of you are going, oh, Adrian, I think you're crazy. My teacher said this, my teacher said that. Um, don't believe me. Don't believe your teacher. Look at the format. Uh, list of headings is the only question that you are given before the passage. All of the other questions you are given after the passage. That's because the people who designed, who made the IELTS, thought about this and said, hey, it's logical to review and answer this one question while the candidates are reading the passage. Every other question they should do after the passage. Self-explanatory. Everybody get that? Okay, is everybody clear on that? So you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe your teacher. Believe the format of the test presentation. It's the only question given to you before the passage. Okay, that makes sense? All right. The only time I would do that for students is if I want them to read it before and answer while they're reading, okay? All right, so list of headings, um, what do you do with them? It's a good question. Okay, so while you review them, think of paraphrasing for the choices. Okay, so think of paraphrasing for the choices while you review each one, as best as you can, okay, as best as you can. All 
right. So let's take a look. Here we go. Uh, when you're at home, use a pen and paper and actually paraphrase them. Okay. Um, but uh, when you're in the exam, um, just uh, do it in your head. Okay. So here we go. Let's do this. So there are different ways to paraphrase. You can uh, find out lots more about paraphrasing on aehelp.com or gltelp.com, synonyms, antonyms, grammar, descriptive. Okay, so here we go. The Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia and America. Um, all right, so a treaty agreement. Okay, of St. Petersburg, that's going to be the same uh, between Russia and America, uh, between Russia and uh, the U.S. Okay, so just a quick paraphrase. Uh, fishing and mining for gold in the Alaska panhandle. Okay, so fishing and mining could be industry. Um, for riches instead of gold in the Alaska panhandle. Okay, that could be another way to paraphrase that. Indigenous rights in the Salmon Treaty of 1985. So indigenous, another way to say that is aboriginal. Um, rights, uh, so um, another way to say that would be aboriginal uh, legal um, claim to... Okay, and then the rest of it in the Salmon Treaty or in the Salmon Treaty. So that's another way. The dispute is adjudicated. Okay, the uh, disagreement is managed, let's say. Right? So just like that, you keep going through each of these and you write each of these down pen and paper at home. All right? Then in the exam, you just uh, do this in your mind. So a treaty draws ambiguous lines. So the agreement creates unclear borders, uh, an uncertain future for the region's sovereignty an unclear future for the area's independence, okay, an unheard voice in the battle for sovereignty, uh, an ignored identity in the dispute for independence, Haida Gwaii and Prince of Wales Island, okay, those are clear, uh, overlapping fishing claims, so conflicting uh, fishing rights, a territory desired by many nations, an area wanted by many people. There we go. All right. So, or many countries. All right. So that's how I would do it in my mind. Now, of course, to do that, to do good paraphrasing for a list of headings, build your vocabulary. So do lots of reading, build your vocabulary and paraphrase as best as you can, as best as you can. All right. So, uh, let's take a look at the other questions now in the passage and see if we should uh, read them or not read them. Here we go. So uh, here is another one. It's match the following people or peoples with facts about them from the passage. Salmon fishers, indigenous peoples, Russian explorers, international uh, tribunal participants. This type of question where you have to match information to people or groups of people, that's all in the passage. So that is good to review. Okay. So definitely, Sammy, you're right. You want to read them. Okay. Uh, Amanjot, the meaning of simulation is when it's just a created event that copies the original, but it's not the original. Okay. Um, Carolina, yeah, peoples. So uh, when you see people with an S, it's another way to say groups of people. Okay. 
Now, it's kind of an interesting exception to English rules to use an S, Carolina. Uh, so, for example, indigenous peoples, the reason we say that is because there are many different indigenous people uh, in Canada and in the U.S. So you have Haida Gwaii, you have Iroquois, Cherokee. So you have many different nations of indigenous people that have unique identities. And so they're referred to as indigenous peoples rather than one group of indigenous people. I hope that makes sense. That's tricky. Okay. All right. So this type of question, yeah, it's good to read uh, before the passage. Okay. So let's look at it. Had various interests with respect to the Alaska boundary dispute until recently lacked a voice in sovereignty discussions. The first inhabitants of the land in question made up of multiple nationalities in the region, including indigenous peoples. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Okay, and then here we have complete each sentence with the correct ending. So this one, just read the questions, don't read the choices, because there are always more choices, right? And we can see there's six choices. And there's three questions. So half of the choices are wrong. So just focus on this. Uh, Novo Arkhangelsk was a Russian settlement located. The battle between the Russians and British. The Alaska purchase resulted among other effects. Okay, some interesting uh, concepts there. Okay, so now we have some more clear ideas of what this passage is about. Uh, it's about Alaska. It's about the boundaries of Alaska and the ownership of Alaska and uh, how that's happening in history. Okay, as some of you may or may not know, Alaska is one of the most valuable pieces of land in the world because it's full of oil, diamond, gold, trees, fish. Lots of other goodies. And it's huge. Alaska is about the size of India, I believe. Okay. Um, so now we go back. And again, remember what I said. So list of headings. We have to answer while we read. So what we're going to do now is we're going to read and we're going to answer these questions. Okay. All right. So let's do this. So the last point for a list of headings questions, okay, after you read a paragraph, ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? Then answer. Finally, choose the list of heading that is the closest match to your answer. Okay, and I'm going to do that, so I'll show you how to do this. So don't freak out. I'm like, what's, what's going on? What is he saying? Um, so just read with me. Visualize. And I'll show you a couple examples, and then I'll get you to do some as well. Okay. All right, uh, here we go, everyone, from the top. So uh, everybody can see this, maybe shrink it a little bit, right? All right, there. Now it should fit into the screen. There we go. I just want to make sure it's all legible. Make, make it a tiny touch bigger. Okay. I think that's going to be it's going to be the maximum that I can get in there for you a little bit more to here okay cool that's about it so he says i'm able to see it all right that's maximum size so here we go okay a, a territorial dispute between friends canada and the united states what do gold and salmon have in common believe it or not they are both the causes of an international boundary dispute that has been simmering 
for over a hundred years and has involved Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Russia. The story of the Alaska boundary dispute begins with the Russian exploration and colonization of the region from the 1780s until 1867. The Russians had set up settlements such as Novo Arkhangelsk, 1799, along the panhandle of Russian America, the long and thin southernmost area of the region, which uh, bordered British territory at the time and borders Canadian territory today. During the 19th century, Russian explorers, fishermen, whalers, and traders populated the area as it was rich in both salmon and sea otters, the latter of which was an incredibly valuable resource in the European fur trade of the time. The presence of British and American explorers also increased during this time. The Americans had an interest in extending their influence from California northward along the Pacific coast, and the British had an interest in pushing back what they felt was Russian incursion on British lands. Perhaps worst of all, the indigenous Haida and Tlingit peoples were caught in the middle of the burgeoning conflict. Their traditional and ancestral lands would be fought over for over 200 years with little regard for their sovereignty. Okay, uh, so now I ask myself, what is this paragraph about? And answer it. So what is this paragraph about? What is this? How would you answer that? So. If I ask this question, what is this paragraph about? I asked you this in English. You answer this for me in English. What would you tell me? Okay. What is it about? So Hassan says it's the background. Sure. And what is the background here, Hassan? Okay, Sammy says trying to claim the land. What land? And Natalie says the history. Sure. Uh, Owis says Alaskan history. It's not bad, Owis. So um, a quick snapshot of uh, the conf conflicts in history over Alaska in the last, well, let's say 300 years. Okay. So that's how I would answer it. Okay. So it's not about this land a million years ago or really just modern day, but I would say it's just a quick picture of the conflict and the history in the Alaskan region over the last 300 years. Would you agree with me that that's what this paragraph is mostly about? Yeah, so Sangmo says it's the gist of the history of Alaska in the last 300 years, in the conflict, right? We have Russia, indigenous people, British, Americans. So would you agree with me that this first paragraph is just a quick picture of the conflicts and the history of the Alaskan region in the last 300 years? Okay, so that's the idea that you want to get. I can see that most of you are like, yeah, yeah, I would agree that that's how I would summarize it, okay? So your goal when you're summarizing is give a complete and concise summary of the paragraph in one sentence, okay? That's what you want to do. That's your goal when you're practicing this strategy. That's how you will really quickly improve uh, your accuracy for a list of headings questions, okay? So you want to give a complete and a concise, so you shouldn't be missing any information and it shouldn't be too long, all right? Okay, um, so let's see what answer matches with this quick idea of the history and the conflicts in Alaska over the last 
300 years. So which one of these choices is the closest? Okay, so uh, in your mind, which one of these matches closest with that? The Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia and America, fishing, mining for gold, indigenous rights, salmon treaty, the dispute is adjudicated, a uh, treaty draws ambiguous lines, an uncertain future for the region's independence or sovereignty, unheard voice, a battle for sovereignty, Haida Gwaii and Prince of Wales Island, overlapping fishing claims, a territory desired by many nations. What would you say is the closest match? All right, nice to see many of our regular students getting this correct. Yeah. I think the closest match is a territory desired by many nations. Alaska argued over by many countries. Okay, so Alaska argued over by many countries. I would say X is the best match. And uh, you have that there. So paragraph A is X. Okay, so that's given. All right. Let's keep going here. Okay, so the next paragraph. All right. Let's see how well you do. Here we go. Okay. All right, so next one, uh, read with me. 1825's Treaty of St. Petersburg between the British and Russians set the boundary between Russian America, modern Alaska, USA, and British North America, modern Yukon Territory, and British Columbia, Canada. But unfortunately, the agreement did not firmly set the boundary in the Panhandle region. This ambiguity did not matter for decades. In fact, following the American purchase of Russian America in 1867, known as the Alaska Purchase, the Canadian government wanted to clarify the Alaska-British Columbia border. The American government rejected the proposal because it did not matter to them enough to warrant the cost of such a survey. This all changed when gold was discovered in the nearby Yukon Territory belonging to Canada in 1897. Okay, so again, what is this paragraph about? So in your words, how would you answer this? And at home, you want to definitely write this down, okay? So what is this paragraph about now in the real test you'll get really quick at this okay so ragav says adjudicated i don't know uh, zahid says yukon territory i don't think that's what it was about what was it about So, conflict between two countries, Lydia? Um, yeah, a little bit of a disagreement between the British, the Americans. Okay, um, what are they trying, what's happening in this paragraph? I don't think, yeah, very good, Jeswinder. I like it. So, Jeswinder got it. So this says some kind of ambiguity of borders. It's not very clear here, Okay. All right. Um, I think it's about. I think that's what it was about. Yeah. So Sammy says trying to set the boundary. Okay, Sammy, I would say in another way, setting unclear boundaries. 
Okay, it's clearly there. I don't think you have to have extremely advanced um, English to figure that out. So here you can see that there's, okay, the Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia, setting the boundary between Russian America and North America. And then it says here, unfortunately, the agreement did not firmly set the boundary to the panhandle this region, okay? So look at this repetition here, not firmly set the boundary, okay? Ambiguity didn't matter for decades, okay? Um, Canadian government wanted to clarify. Um, the American government rejected the proposal, okay? Uh, this changed when gold was discovered, okay? So, again, the paragraph here is giving you this information in several points. Does everybody now see that clearly? That there are several phrases and quite a few vocabulary that tells the reader that there's not enough clarity here. So something is confusing about the borders. Okay. Everybody see the wording now? Yeah? Okay. Good. All right. So now, now we want to figure out which of these is the closest match. Okay. So which of these is the closest match? All right. So tell me, which one matches the closest there? What would you say is the best one? Lydia says, number five, uh, a treaty draws ambiguous lines, right? We have the word ambiguous in there, which is unclear. Okay. So yeah. It looks right. Number five, ambiguous. I think that's the closest. Okay. Uh, now, so sometimes students have this um, very dangerous strategy from um, some websites that say just read the first sentence. Okay. Uh, if you read the first sentence, uh, then many people might choose which answer. So if you're only reading the first sentence of each paragraph and you're trying to answer this, then which answer might you give instead of the correct answer? Okay, which one? That's right, Hassan. Yeah, the first one. So if you're only skimming and scanning and you only read the first sentence of the paragraph, then many people would probably mistakenly choose this answer here, number one. Yeah, exactly. So it's very dangerous, okay? Uh, that's why students, uh, some of these strategies that you read about and you see online, you have to be really careful with them. They only work till about a band six. But if you need a higher score than a band six, I really strongly suggest knowing correct strategies for the information and for understanding the passage, okay? Everybody, please heed my warning about that, okay? I've seen so many students do the skimming, scanning, or trying to read just keywords or the first sentence, last sentence, and then picking these wrong ones. The people who make the IELTS exam, they know that students are trying to do this, and so they create questions in such a way that it doesn't work, okay? All right, so just be very careful. Yeah, five is the correct answer, okay? So a treaty draws ambiguous lines. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so we're going to do this verbally now. Okay, we're going to do this verbally now. Um, so read with me. The Klondike Gold Rush transformed a simmering dispute into an inferno. Canada wanted a direct route through Canadian territory to the Pacific Ocean in order to get their gold onto ships and transported to market. The United States, meanwhile, wanted to keep control of the coastal territory. The two sides could not come up with an agreement, and therefore the dispute went to an international tribunal in 1903. I think somebody asked me what the meaning of tribunal is. Um, tribunal is like an official court of many countries 
to uh, help countries make a decision when they can't do it on their own. Okay, so international tribunal uh, in 1903, a kind of court where a supposedly unbiased group of people would decide the issue. The jury was made up of six men, no women, three Americans, two Canadians, and one Briton. Indigenous voices were not heard. The Americans were all politicians, while the Canadians were non-partisan jurists, lawyers, and scholars, and the Briton was Lord Alverston, Lord Chief Justice of England. The Americans and Canadian representatives favored their own government claims, so it was up to Lord Alverston. Uh, to the Canadian public's disbelief, Lord Alverston decided in favor of the American claim. Canada was a British dominion at the time, a partially independent nation with very strong ties to Britain, and Canadians felt betrayed by their colonial government. Canada had lost the dispute but refused to sign the resulting document. Though the decision became an international law, Canadians did not endorse it, and the dispute over the region continues to this day. All right. Uh, now, without writing this all down, uh, just verbally, what is this paragraph about? So what are we dealing with here? What is this paragraph about? Nice and quickly. How would you summarize it? So it's a complete summary and um, it's concise. So in one sentence. So just when it says an unsolved issue. Yeah. Okay, uh, Puneet says it's a breach of agreement. <laughs> Stefan says Canada got screwed. <laughs> yeah, Stefan, in some ways I would agree with you. Okay, Amanjad says it's a dispute between Canada and United States. Amanjad, I would agree with you. It's an ongoing dispute between Canada and United States over the borders. Okay, uh, Abhishek says the control the continuing dispute over the control over the coastal areas. Yeah. All right. So let's see which one of these matches the most. Okay. So here we go. Uh, which one of these do you think is the closest match for paragraph C? Okay. Which one would you say is the best match so far? The Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia and America, fishing and mining for gold in Alaska, indigenous rights in the Sam dispute is adjudicated. The treaty draws ambiguous lines. Which one do you think? Yeah, it's number four. The dispute is adjudicated. It means it basically is taken into the legal world, okay? So uh, that tribunal, okay? So adjudicated. It's legally managed. Okay, so when it goes to the court, it's legally managed. And in this case, that was the tribunal. Okay, uh, it would be very difficult to skim or scan for this because the word is not in the paragraph, I believe. Um, so they simply just say it goes to an international tribunal. So number four is the best answer. Yeah, very good. Great job, everyone. Okay. So let's go to the next paragraph. Let's read together. Here we go, everyone. Rolling along. Let's get some momentum. Read with me. Read nice and loud. Okay. Here we go. Today, there is no gold rush in the region. Rather, there is salmon and a lot of it. Fishing rights are what matter in regards to the Alaska boundary dispute today. Central to this debate is the strait known as Dixon Entrance, which lies between Haida Gwaii, Canada, and Prince of Wales Island, USA. The 1903 agreement tried to settle this aspect of the dispute, but it again failed. Today, the United States claims fishing rights 
to the midway point between the northern edge of Haida Gwaii and the southern edge of Prince of Wales Island, while Canada claims virtually all of the marine territory south of Prince of Edward Island. All right. So, what is this paragraph about? <laughs> How would you summarize this? Okay, so lots of battling here. How would you summarize this one in your own words? So Abhishek says, distributed coastal lines by Americans and Canadians. Hassan says, fishing conflicts. Hassan, that's half of it. So Hassan, always focus on getting the whole bit, right? So fishing conflict over the region or over territories, okay? Yeah, Sibi, very good. So Sibi says, territorial dispute for fishing in Alaska. Okay, nice. Definitely something about fishing. So let's check uh, this here. Okay. Um, so which one of these matches mostly of territorial dispute over fishing? Which would you say matches the closest to what you say? Okay. Oh, it's again, look at the full picture. So fishing dispute in the territory. Sammy, fighting for fishing rights in the Alaska region, coastal region. Okay. So fishing and mining for gold in the panhandle. We don't have mining and it's not the pan, not just the panhandle here. So, yeah. I would agree for those of you overlapping fishing claims. This is the main okay um the paragraph says even though there's no gold in the region now right so number nine is the correct answer okay so those of you who are thinking number nine you got it right uh you have to choose the best answer always students for these list of headings and um fishing and mining this paragraph clearly starts with although there is no more gold in this region so number two definitely not uh, Stefan overlapping is when you have one and then you have another over top so you have the Canadian saying we can fish all of this area here and the Americans say no 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 you can't fish this area here because that's our area so there's an overlap in their claims okay overlapping like that all right everybody gets overlapping so my uh, left hand is being overlapped by my right hand. Okay, this is overlapping. Literally, that's what it means. Okay, um, panhandle. So if you look at a map, everybody, of Alaska, Alaska comes out like this, okay? And there's kind of like an area like this. Okay, and then here it's, uh, so this is Alaska, okay? Um, Alaska kind of looks like a giant frying pan. So you have the frying pan like this for making eggs. Okay, so Alaska kind of looks like that frying pan. And this is considered the Alaska pan handle. So this is the pan and this is the handle. And here you have British Columbia, which extends further down. And then here you have Yukon. Okay, so this part here it's considered the panhandle. All right, a little bit of geography there. Everybody's good on that now, hopefully. Uh, take a look at a map after this class, and you will see what the panhandle is. It's called the panhandle because of the shape. It's like the handle on the pan, okay? Good questions. Always be curious. Always thirst for knowledge. All right, good, good. Okay, so... Uh, let's do the last two. Here we go. Uh, e, read with me. Over the past 40 years, there have been numerous minor skirmishes in these waters. These have been mediated by short-term agreements between Canada and the U.S. The Pacific Salmon Treaty of 1985, for example, but they have never been definitively solved. To this day, Numerous breaches of sovereign Canadian territory in the region are reported by Canadian fishers. 
The American fishers, however, believe they are fishing in their own national waters. The Pacific Salmon Treaty expired on 31st of December 2019, and it is unclear what will become of the disputed waters. Hmm, what is this about? Okay, so what is E about? Sunny the Real Slim Shady says, well, there's a lot of fishes, emojis there. Okay. All right. So what is this about? It's about some kind of a treaty to solve this dispute, specifically the Salmon Treaty. Right? Hassan says, unclear future. Okay, so yeah, some kind of a treaty, uncertainty, unclear future. Let's take a look and see which one of these matches the closest. Okay, so which one of these? Hassan, if you think it's about an unclear future for the region because there's no treaty in place, nobody knows where they should and should not be fishing, which one do you think is the best answer? Nick Hill and Lydia both say, well... According to what Hassan said, I think it's number six, an uncertain future for the region's sovereignty. Yeah, absolutely. Who gets to fish there? Canadians? Americans? Nobody knows. Not so long ago, I think even the Spanish came over there. <laughs> so, right, and that might have been the Atlantic side, but uh, definitely a lot of conflict over fishing in the... Pacific and in the Atlantic regions of North America. All right, let's do the last one. So that was number six. Last paragraph. Here we go. Uh, read with me. Lost in the friction between colonial powers over the centuries has been the voice of the indigenous peoples of the region. The Haida and the Tlingit have been fishing the area for countless thousands of years. And not only have they had their territory ripped from their hands, they have had their ancestral rights to fish their waters diminished as well. Today, the Canadian government aims to mitigate these wrongs by recognizing and formalizing into law indigenous rights to fish in the area in whatever future agreement comes to be between Canada and the United States. All right, so this is the conclusion, quite interesting. How would you summarize that? So how would you summarize this conclusion? Okay, what would you say it's mostly about here? So Hassan says it's the unheard voice of the Haida and the Tlingit. Uh, Natalie says it's the Aboriginal rights or lack of in the area, right, Natalie? So it's not just their rights, it's the Aboriginal rights or lack of rights in the area. Okay, Lydia says it's the Indigenous rights or lack of rights, right? Okay, all right. The Indigenous rights are ignored by colonizers. Lovely and I, very nice way, yeah, to put it. So by the colonizing nations, the Indigenous rights are ignored okay uh and uh which one of these is the closest match okay so last question do it right i believe you've got this which one do you think is the closest match okay It's not number three. There's nothing uh, about the Salmon Treaty. That was the previous paragraph. This was uh, between U.S. and Canada. There's nothing there um, between uh, the indigenous people. Okay, so that was between U.S. and Canada. So it's not number three. Just Winder, Carolina. I'm so impressed. Sibby, I'm so impressed. Yeah, an unheard voice in the battle for sovereignty. Right. The unheard voice is the voice of the indigenous people as uh, people fight over this piece of land. So number seven 
is the best answer. Okay, this is wrong. Okay, this one's wrong too. Both of these are wrong. Okay, for the previous question. So careful with that. All right, everyone. I think you've done a fantastic job. These are always challenging. Make sure you always choose the answer that doesn't have false information. If it has false information like this in the answer, it's wrong. Okay, so keep looking, keep searching for the right one. Right? It's a very important tip. Did everybody catch that? So don't pick an answer that has false information in it, even if it looks okay. All right, be careful about that. All right, everyone, so that's list of headings. Again, list of headings. Number one, read them before you read the passage, even though there are some extra and false ideas in there. Number two, answer them while you read the passage. Only answer them after you finish each paragraph. The best way to do it, read the paragraph. Think, what is it about? Give a complete and concise answer to that question and then choose the closest match. That's how you will pick the most likely correct answer to your question. All right, everyone. So uh, here are the other questions. Uh, you can do this on your own time, okay? And if you send me an email with the answers to these questions, I will send you back the answer key and a nice discount code for our premium packages at aehelp.com and gialtshelp.com. So send me the answers. I'll send you back the answer key and a nice discount code to join our premium package. Uh, this is the last set of questions here. Uh, let me try to get all of that on the screen. There we go. 24, 25, 26 with the possible uh, choices. So you can check those out at the end of the video. Uh, tomorrow, I will be back with task two essay writing. Uh, we will start the class in the members chat class and we will finish the essay in the all chat class. So the whole essay all in one go in two classes tomorrow. Thank you so much everybody for joining and being with me in this class. I hope you had fun improving your reading in English and also learning a little bit about American and Canadian history along the Northwest Coast. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest. Much love to all of you. Take care and hopefully I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.